What's up smart homers, my name's Aaron. Some of the recent changes to Home Assistant have made using Bluetooth devices so much easier, and in some cases, it's actually my preferred type of device to use. The sponsor of this video, SwitchBot, makes a bunch of different Bluetooth devices that work great with Home Assistant. In this video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of SwitchBot devices, how they work with Home Assistant, and then I'll show you how I use them in my office setup. A big thank you to SwitchBot for sponsoring this video. SwitchBot is a very unique company in that it's making a lot of Bluetooth devices in the smart home space instead of Zigbee or Wi-Fi. They're kind of forging their own path in the industry by going this way, but their devices are super high quality and aesthetically appealing. Each one clearly has a lot of thought put into them, and this results in devices that have more features than their counterparts in the rest of the smart home space. This makes them super great for first time smart homers. Speaking of first time smart homers, as you start to build your smart home, you're gonna realize that you can not only save time, but also energy. And with the rising prices of energy, this is gonna really impact your wallet. SwitchBot has teamed up with IFTTT for their energy challenge, which is a way to get the smart home community into saving energy through connected devices. I made a video for this challenge previously. If you haven't seen that, I'll go ahead and link that in the description. I'll talk to you a little bit more about the energy challenge later on. The first device we're gonna take a look at is the SwitchBot contact sensor. Like most SwitchBot products, it has a really nice feel to it. It has the sensor body and a magnet part, like with most contact sensors, but it also has a motion sensor built into it and a button on the front of the body. It comes with adhesive pre-installed on the back of both parts of the device so that it can be stuck right to a door or window, and it also has screw holes in the battery cover, so you can actually screw mount the cover to the wall and then stick the body into place. Speaking of batteries, this thing takes two AAA batteries that should last a while. Once you put the batteries in and replace the cover, you're going to see the contact sensor is automatically recognized by Home Assistant if it's in Bluetooth range. In Home Assistant, you get contact, motion, light, and battery sensors. I didn't see anything to do with that button that's on the front of the device. So I tried creating a test automation to see if the button press was available as a trigger, and unfortunately it's not. So it looks like the button is only useful within the SwitchBot app. In the SwitchBot app, you can use the button for when you're leaving a room, you press the button and then shut the door. Then SwitchBot knows you left the room and it can perform some kind of automation. The next device is the SwitchBot Bot, which is one of their more popular products. In fact, it's actually the first product I ever heard about from them and I think it was their first product ever. It's a tiny little bot, as the name implies, with a motorized finger that has two actions that happen in series, extend and retract. It can be used for manually pressing buttons, light switches, etc., and even comes with a sticky pad attached to a loop that can both push and pull. This one comes with a CR2 battery, which is super common, so you may want to start stocking those if you're going to buy some bots. As soon as you pull the battery isolator tab, this thing will be discovered by Home Assistant and you can add it. It shows up with an assumed state switch entity and a battery entity. Assumed state pretty much means that Home Assistant really doesn't know if it's extended or retracted or what state it's in and kind of assumes based on the last action sent through Home Assistant. Tapping the switch in Home Assistant fires the finger to extend and retract like you'd think. The next one is the Thermometer and Hygrometer Plus. If you haven't seen the original thermometer and hygrometer, this one's pretty much the same thing, but on steroids. It has a three inch digital display that reports the temperature, humidity, and battery level. And the back of the device has a kickstand that can be extended to two different angles to prop it up. It also has a magnet inside of it on the top back side. A magnetic metal strip with adhesive is also provided in the packaging. And this allows you to adhere the strip to the wall and then magnetically stick this thermometer hygrometer to the strip. The two AAA batteries are already installed, so all you have to do is pull that battery isolator tab to turn it on. You'll see the temperature reported in Celsius on the front, but if you want to change those units, there's a button on the back that you can press to change it. In Home Assistant, it's automatically discovered when you pull that tab and you get temperature, humidity, and battery sensors. Next, we have the motion sensor. This is one of the best looking motion sensors that I've seen. And if you saw my previous comparison of motion sensors, you know that I've reviewed a ton of different motion sensors. It has a really clean look that's probably only paralleled by the Philips Hue. It has a nice smooth surface like the rest of the SwitchBot devices, and it has the SwitchBot logo engraved on the front. 
It also comes with a nice stand for mounting it, which can be attached to the bottom or the back of the sensor with a bit of force. The bottom of the stand has rubber grips if you want to just set it on a flat surface, but the bottom can actually be removed and then screwed into a surface and then you can attach the stand to that. When you remove the bottom, you're also going to see a magnet. So this sensor has a ton of different ways to mount it. You can mount it by just placing it with those rubber feet kind of keeping it in place. You can mount it with the screws, you can mount it adhesive, and you can mount magnetically. Like I said, the stand does take a bit of force to actually attach to the body, but this does give it some durability and you know it's not going to fall off the stand. To add the two AAA batteries, you just pull off the back cover and then pop them in. In Home Assistant, the motion sensor is automatically picked up and it comes with light, motion, and battery entities. Next, we're gonna look at the SwitchBot color bulb. It has a really nice feel to it, nice solid feel, and it has an E26 base and the SwitchBot logo on the solid part of that base. When I screwed the bulb into a socket, it actually wasn't auto-discovered in Home Assistant like most of the devices were. Instead, I had to go to Integrations and click Add Integration and then search for SwitchBot. And then when I clicked the integration, it showed me any available SwitchBot devices to set up, one of which was the color bulb. And I clicked the bulb and I could go ahead and add it. In Home Assistant, you get the light entity with the ability to control color and brightness. This bulb has both warm and cool white and RGB coloring. And although it can't really show it here, it has excellent colors. A lot of times when you buy smart bulbs, the cheaper ones have a really washed out yellow. But this one is an exception. The yellow is a nice saturated yellow, which looks excellent. I'll definitely be including this bulb when I do my smart bulb comparison video. The last device we're gonna look at is the smart plug. I specifically chose the one that's HomeKit compatible, and I'll explain why later on. The smart plug has a clean, simple look that's much different than a lot of the smart plugs that we've looked at in my smart plug comparison video. Besides the receptacle itself, it has a single status LED in the bottom right corner. It has no SwitchBot branding on the face, but it does have the name engraved on the back. On the right side, there's a button that can be used to manually turn the plug on and off. On the top is a sticker with the HomeKit pairing code, and we'll use this code later. This plug is also capable of power monitoring, and in the app, you can see today's energy usage, the power, current, voltage, and previous day's energy usage. There's even a history button that you can tap to get energy usage history. When you plug the device in, it immediately shows up in Home Assistant, and you can configure it. When you do, you get a switch entity, but nothing else. The energy stats are missing. Because I thought this might happen, I chose the HomeKit compatible plug, figuring that maybe the stats would come in through the HomeKit controller integration. In order to add it to the HomeKit controller integration, you have to first add it to the SwitchBot app and then connect it to Wi-Fi there. And then the HomeKit controller integration is automatically going to pick it up and you just got to enter the pairing code that's on the top of the device. Unfortunately, when it was added with the HomeKit controller integration, still no energy data. I actually tried adding it directly to HomeKit to see if the energy data would show up there, and it doesn't show up there either. So you're pretty much not gonna have energy data in Home Assistant using this device. If you're just trying to see how much energy something uses, it's okay to just do it right in the SwitchBot app, but if you wanna do any long-term energy monitoring, you're probably gonna want a plug that's actually gonna send that data to Home Assistant. This is a little bit disappointing, but hopefully in future versions of this plug, that data is sent to Home Assistant. Okay, so now let's talk about how I'm using these devices together with Home Assistant in my office setup and about how I save energy using these devices. If you saw my previous energy challenge video, you'll remember that I saved a bunch of energy by putting my PC to sleep when not in use. And you'll remember that I used a smart plug with energy monitoring to determine how much energy I was using. Well, the problem with putting my computer to sleep is that in order to wake it up, I have to manually press a button on my PC tower. This is where the SwitchBot bot comes in. I can put it on my PC tower and I can remotely press that button. I'm using the color bulb to provide some accent lighting in the office, along with those LED strips powered by WLED that I've shown in previous videos. I have the contact sensor on the office door to sense when the door is opened. And even though it's a bit redundant because the contact sensor has a motion sensor, I put the SwitchBot motion sensor on my shelf to detect motion in the office. When I left the room for a while and no motion is detected, it's gonna turn off the ambient lighting in the office to save a bunch of energy. If you saw my video on WLED, you'll know how much power these LED strips actually use, which is pretty significant, and you don't want those lights on unless you need them on. 
After some time of not being in the office, the PC is actually going to go to sleep as well. If I decide to put the PC to sleep manually, Home Assistant will pick that up because I'm using the Hass Agent integration, which you can check out everything Smart Home's video on that. And Home Assistant then knows my computer is asleep and it turns off all the ambient lighting. When the door in my office is open then, all the lights come on and if the PC is asleep, it wakes it up. This way, I never have to actually manually wake up my PC or turn on my lights. Again, if I leave the room and there's no longer motion detected, the lights go off and my PC eventually falls asleep. I also keep the thermometer and hygrometer on my desk to monitor the temperature in the office because it's a small office and with all the lights and the PC in the room, it actually heats up pretty quick and I know when I need to open up that door. I actually use a smart plug connected to a fan to blow air out of the office when I open up that door if it's too hot. Like I mentioned before, this video is sponsored by SwitchBot and they've partnered with IFTTT for the energy challenge. If you want to join in and help show how much money you've saved by energy savings with connected smart devices, head over to the energy challenge website that I've linked in the description and join the challenge. Also, there are a ton of other smart home YouTubers that have made videos about the energy challenge. So if you're interested, check out the playlist that's at the end of this video. It should give you a lot of ideas for how you can save energy with your smart home. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing how easy it is to add SwitchBot devices to Home Assistant. And there's a reason why more and more people are using this integration in Home Assistant. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And please like the video if you did like it and you want to help out the algorithm. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I have some great stuff coming up. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.